I had to undergo a bone marrow transplant when I was just six months old. And now I have pulmonary fibrosis, which is a serious lung disease. And my lung capacity is now only 20%. My name is Aisha Chowdhury and I'm 17 years old. And today I'd like to talk about what really matters most to me in life. Now life can be tough when every single breath you take is a struggle and the slightest infection causes a serious, life-threatening exacerbation. And the last one for me was in November last year when I went from being able to walk around freely and go to school to suddenly being bedridden, unable to turn over in bed without getting out of breath. And I must confess that I did wonder if I was going to die. And I would have sleepless nights just thinking, tossing and turning with this idea that soon I may be gone. And if that's going to happen, what's the point of anything? I think about this for hours and get nowhere. But then it suddenly struck me that I'm not really alone in all of this. Is it not true that not just me, but all of us are going to die one day? Yes, all of us are going to die. I'd like you all to just think about that for a moment. In the next hundred years, all of us sitting in this room today will be gone, just at different times, some sooner than the others. So then, if death is the ultimate truth, what should really matter most in life? The only thing that matters to me is being happy. And happiness is a choice one makes. It's simply an attitude. I can either choose to be happy and try to smile through all of my difficult times, or I can choose to be miserable and get overwhelmed by it all. Now it's not that by being miserable, I'm going to get any better. So I may as well choose to be happy. And if I have to have pulmonary fibrosis, I choose to have a happy pulmonary fibrosis. Now, I'd like to share with you a few difficult moments in the recent past where I've chosen to be happy. This year, I was quite unwell and I had to undergo several medical tests. And one such test was a sleep study done to check if my oxygen levels were okay when I sleep. And this picture was taken right before the study. And you can see that I'm almost trapped in a bunch of wires, some stuck to my face and some to my body to monitor my heart, my brain and my breathing. Despite all of this, I'm still smiling because I refuse to let this illness get the better of me. I just won't let it. And I chose to find humor in observing the man who was doing my sleep study. I couldn't help but laugh at the way he would just put up his own feet on my bed and go off to sleep himself, snoring away. And this obviously made it difficult for me to sleep. And maybe that's why my results were so bad. How ridiculous, I thought to myself. Later that month, my family and I had to go to England for a full medical checkup. And the days were filled with long, boring medical appointments, talking about lung transplant and what seemed like endless amounts of tests. This is a picture of my brother and I just after I had spent one long day at the hospital. But guess where we were headed in this photo? To see a Broadway show 
in London, and it was fabulous. I was able to put the trauma of the day at the hospital behind me, and I still managed to find the will and the excitement in going out for a play and spending quality time with my brother. I believe that it's important to create many happy memories so that we can try to wipe out the sad ones. After having quite an unpleasant summer with all of these medical issues, my family and I decided to take a holiday to the Maldives. And there was so much to do in the Maldives. But of course my health didn't permit me to do a lot of the things that I wanted to. And one of the main activities was snorkeling. And I desperately wanted to try it. But how could a person who has difficulty breathing go snorkeling? Well, in this picture, you can see me in my snorkeling gear right after I popped my head out of the water after seeing the most beautiful, vibrant colored fish. But now I'm not going to lie. I did only dip my head in for a second, but I did what I wanted to do. And that moment for me was worth everything. And I felt extreme happiness and was even surprised at myself for doing something that everyone wasn't sure was really possible. So happiness is clearly a choice one can make. No matter what, no matter where, you can find it if you look for it. Tom Wilson once said, a smile is happiness that you can find right under your nose.